Greetings friends of the universe. Today we are going to talk about the reptilian extraterrestrial race. What is their history? What is their impact on our galaxy? And what are they doing on our planet? Let's start. The reptilians are one of the most ancient and technologically advanced civilization in the universe. What is interesting is that they were genetically created by another race, referred to as Master Race. This Master Race history began so many years ago when Earth as we know it didn't even exist. Long time ago, when the universe wasn't populated with millions of extraterrestrials and extremely advanced beings arrived in this universe from a different unknown world. These beings were called Carrions and were one of the first beings who came in this universe alongside the feline race who settled in the Lyrans. When these Carrion beings arrived in our universe, which was very limited in life forms, they were in etheric form, and they chose to become physical in appearance and exist in the third dimension. In order to do this, they took on the shape and bodies of the creatures who flew over the planet they wanted to incarnate on. These creatures resembled our earthly birds. After many incarnations into this bird-like beings, this extremely advanced race, with extraordinary universal knowledge, successfully evolved their physical, third-dimensional bodies. This bird race, known as Carrions, genetically designed many extraterrestrial races. One of the first races they created were the Reptilians. When they created the Reptilian race, they left them in a planet near the star Alpha Draconi in the Draco constellation, where they had the best chance of survival. Upon the creation of the reptilian race by the Carrions, they told the reptilians that this universe was theirs to command. They told them that everything is theirs for the taking, and they must dominate every galaxy, planet, and race they encounter. This way of thinking was planted since their creation and grew stronger throughout the years of evolution. They have this belief system, even today. The originally created reptilian race, later called Master Race by the other reptilian species, were called the Alpha Draconians and were considered royalties. The Alpha Draconians look like monsters compared to the other reptilian species. They have long tails and stand from 18 to 25 feet tall and can weigh up to 2,500 pounds. They even have special wings, which are flaps of skin, supported by long ribs, which can be folded back against the body. They have a large liver and two hearts. They have the strength of 12 to 16 humans. Their heads resemble that of a dinosaur, striking fear in everyone who simply looks at them. The average lifespan of the Draconians extends from 1800 to 4100 years of age. There are actually two types of Alpha Draconians, divided into two castes. The giant ones are part of a royal caste called the Syakur, while there are smaller ones, 8 feet tall, which form a well-trained warrior class and do not have wings. The ones that live as long as 4100 years are the royal line of the Draconians, the winged Syakurs. This ancient race was one of the first civilization in our galaxy to have developed the interstellar space travel and have had this capability for 4 billion years. They were one of the first races to chart our solar system, and in fact, they were the first race to state that our solar system belonged to the reptilians. They had a great technological advantage over the other races, which was probably given to them by the Carrions. The Alpha Draconians have colonized and conquered many star systems and have created many reptilian and non-reptilian races by genetically altering the life forms they encountered. One of the most prominent races created by the Draconians is a race we know of as Grey Aliens. This creation of a species was necessary for their survival as a race. As the Draconian civilization continued to grow and expand, they needed new sources of negative energy because they feed by consuming this negative energy. 
seeking other planets to infest with their evil agenda, they soon came to realize that a creation of evil race, created by cloning, would benefit them. Gray aliens were created as a slave race to the reptilians. As the reptilians grew in numbers, the greys grew also. Soon, a revolution would take place that would give birth to the gray aliens and their agenda to find a cure for their cloned race that is slowly dying because they don't actually have any ability to reproduce. This is one of the main reasons for the many human abductions by gray aliens simply to use our genetic material. The Draconians are the force behind the repression of human races everywhere in this galaxy, instilling fear-based belief systems and restrictive hierarchies. The Draconians view themselves as the first intelligent species to evolve in the Milky Way galaxy. Competitive and expansive, they have populated many planets. Their immense egos allows them to see themselves as the rightful rulers of lesser evolved planets such as planet Earth. Their continuous exploitation of the human race proves they consider us an inferior species. The most densely populated area of sub-races of Draconians is the constellation of Orion, Rigel, and the star system, known as Capella. Here lies a very dangerous part of the universe for any human beings. The reptilian races living there are extremely violent toward races such as humans and are prone to destruction, enslavement, and domination. These are highly advanced beings but viewed as being of a negative, hostile, and dangerous disposition since they regard humans as a totally inferior race. They would perceive us much the way we would perceive a herd of cattle. In fact, all reptilian races see other races and civilizations simply as a natural resource, work hand, food, or genetic material. Nowadays, there are countless of different reptilian species ranging in physical appearance. The reptilians encountered on Earth and most known throughout human history were a race originally left behind by the Alpha Draconians to colonize our planet, which they believe is theirs. Their interaction with mankind goes back thousands of years, and there are records of them from all of the ancient civilizations. The reptilians encountered on Earth are standing anywhere from 6 to 8 feet tall. Their most recognizable feature is their snake and lizard resemblance. They have scaled skin, which ranges in color, usually from green to brown, but there are some other colors, like black, orange, red, and even white. They have lean firm bodies, with powerful arms and legs. Their arms are long, with three fingers, and an opposable thumb. Their feet have three toes, and one recessed fourth, that is toward the back side of their ankle. The claws are short and blunt. Their hands, abdomen, and face are covered with smaller scales, allowing more flexibility. They have wide lipless mouths, and the majority of them are reported to have differentiated types of teeth. Reptilians have either large black eyes with vertical slit pupils or eyes that are white with flame-colored pupils. Some reptilians' heads are slightly conical in shape and have two bony ridges riding from their brow across their back sloping skull toward the back of their head. Throughout history, these bony ridges may have been misidentified as protruding horns. Reptilian beings have no body or facial hair. The higher a reptilian's status, the more features it physically decorates itself. For example a tail, wings, and a bony ring around its head. Because of a reptilian's mental power, it can influence its body. The reptilian races believe that fear rules and love is weak. They believe that those they perceive to be less fortunate in comparison to them are meant to be slaves. This belief system is promoted at birth in the reptilian races. After the reptilians are born, their mother will abandon the offspring to fend for themselves. If they survive, they are cared for by a warrior class that uses these children for games of combat and amusement. In this way, the reptilians are forever stuck in survival state. They believe that in their ways, 
that if the young ones survive, they were meant to, and in the process, they have had to fight all the way, and at a young age, they're completed warriors and depend on no one. This means they have no boundaries in what they will do to other beings. It is rooted in them never to trust a human race. After the Great Galactic War in Lyra, when the reptilians invaded the humanoid races who were living in peace and harmony. All of the reptilians are taught the draconian version of the history of the Great Galactic War, which teaches that humans are at fault for invading the universe and that humans selfishly wanted the draconian society to starve and struggle for the basic materials that would allow them to exist. The reptilians are taught from young that they are superior to all other beings and that they need to be respected and be perceived as masters. Essentially, one of the main things that the reptilians try to do here on Earth is to cause human suffering and to ensure there is constant conflict. The reason they want this is because the reptilian actually consume negative energy like jealousy, fear, hate, anger, and even sexual energy created from perversions. It is believed that they have the ability to shapeshift and use this ability to get themselves deeply infiltrated in our governments, controlling our society, our moral, educational, and economic systems. The reptilians are responsible for all of the wars, destruction, perversion, hatred, and degradation in humanity since they consume the negative energy we create. The reptilians also enjoy eating human flesh and human children for several reasons. The first is that children don't have the accumulation of pollutants in their bodies that adults do. The other reason is that when children are put into a state of fear, their energy field and adrenaline hormones just explodes and gets extremely high. The reptilians get a huge rush from these hormones and enjoy them very much. This is the reason why hundreds of thousand children are missing every year without anyone knowing what exactly happened to any of them. If they capture a human being, they will not usually kill the person right away. What they usually do is terrify them as much as possible in order to jack up the level of emotion and hormones. Then, when they consume the physical body of that psychologically terrorized being, not only are they feeding themselves, but the hormones impart a physiological and psychological rush, which they enjoy. It's essentially like getting high from some kind of a drug. Out of all the different types of extraterrestrials, the reptilians are by far the most dangerous to our very existence as humans. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the notification button to get notified for all our future videos.